From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our Friday forecast, plus the latest on the stormy conditions out there and the wildfires. But first, let's go ahead and get right to our top story. A standoff in Billings on Broadwater and 15th had SWAT teams surrounding a man this morning who was refusing to get out of his vehicle. Now, this all happened on Broadwater Avenue. A call came in just before 9 a.m. for a potential DUI situation that according to the Billings police. Now they did not know if the man was armed, so they took all precautions blockading the area, rerouting traffic. MTN's Matt Carmack was on scene and she tells us they have apprehended the man right around 11 o'clock this morning and we'll have the very latest on your local MTN website. A popular Montana State Park is under an evacuation order for the second time this month after a fast moving wildfire sparked near the Montana Wyoming border. In early July, the Dead Man Fire north of the reservoir forced a voluntary evacuation, but that fire has since been contained. Now the Badger Creek Fire has exploded to around 3,000 acres, causing the Tongue River Reservoir State Park to clear out once again, MTN's David J has the very latest on this human caused blaze, which started in Sheridan County. The Badger Creek fire in Wyoming has presented a potential threat to Tongue River Reservoir State Park and that has put in some evacuation orders in the morning. Park management says that all that went fairly smoothly. The evacuation at the campground started at 4 a.m. for an estimated 70 campsites. They understood the the, the seriousness of the situation and, and they were able to get out. Raymond Shell, manager at the Tongue River Reservoir State Park Campground, says the evacuations took until around 8 or 9 in the morning to complete. Some were able to get going right away and left right away. Other ones need a little more time because um, they got boats and they got, uh, you know, their uh, whatever, you know, gear laying around the campsite and tents and things. And so it took them a little bit longer. The incident command at the Badger Creek Fire northeast of Sheridan determined it would be best to evacuate the campground as the flames spread quickly. The fire was burning from the south to the north at a high rate of speed. We had high winds, high temperatures, low humidity. We had probably 40-foot flame lengths just laying on the ground. Josh McKinley, Clearwater Fire District Chief, says crews have made progress on the Wyoming side of the fire, but it has burned a total of 6,000 acres. They were able to hold it at the... Lower Prairie Dog County Road for a good amount of time, but it, it did end up jumping the line and moving its way up into Montana. No one is allowed back in the park, and Fish, Wildlife, and Park says it is considering a closure. We're still seeing some smoke. Like I said, it's, a little, it's better than it was this morning. Afternoons usually seem to do a little better, but uh, there, it's still air quality is still not not the best. It's still active. It is contained for the most part. We do have a line around it. Tonight, they're going to monitor it. We'll be back out there in the morning, and we will continue with mop-up operations as long as everything holds tonight. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Happy Friday, everybody, and TGIF Boom as we cruise into the weekend. Cooler temperatures coming in behind this cold front. We'll take a look at our local forecast in just a moment. But first, what's going on across the U.S. today? Much of the south, scattered showers and thunderstorms today. Portions of the Intermountain West, monsoonal thunderstorms do continue. And portions of the upper Midwest and the northern plains, severe weather possible all the way through Saturday. As we take a look at the big picture here, you can see a cold front making its way through, bringing cooler temperatures in. In, but do the cooler temperatures last? What about the wildfire smoke? And do we have any rain in the forecast? A lot of stuff to talk about. We'll do that coming up with the main forecast in just a bit. An update now about that massive storm that delivered a knockout punch to western Montana Wednesday night. Take a look at this damage in and around Missoula caused by upwards of 100 mile per hour straight line winds, down trees, many vehicles trapped, even destroyed, down power lines, signs completely torn apart, some 10,000 homes losing power. Northwestern Energy is working around the clock restoring that power, but we are hearing many are still without power this noon. One resident described a chaotic scene, saying it was like living through a tornado. My wife had just come in as it started, but she said it was like a tornado where you hear that wall of roaring. And then, yeah, we got into the house. 
and you know it was just slamming on the windows we could hear branches and stuff breaking and trees breaking Despite all the damage and likely weeks of cleanup ahead, the community says everyone is already coming together to help each other out in any way they can. That storm pushed across the Continental Divide, unleashing damaging winds that downed power lines and toppled trees in Conrad as well, where one woman is counting her blessings. She found herself narrowly avoiding a dangerous encounter with a falling tree when attempting to put items away from those windy conditions. The tree crashed to the ground just inches from where she stood, cutting power and damaging the gate in her backyard. God, holy cow. Very lucky or don't have any power right now, but freezer full of food isn't worth much compared to being here, not in the hospital at least. A few inches either way, I'd been gone. That storm brought 60 to 75 mile per hour gusts of winds to surrounding counties. Fires were sparked across portions of north central Montana as well, though many of the fires have since been contained. People are being advised not to float on the Bitterroot River between Lolo and Missoula because power lines are down in the rivers. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks say they've received reports of lines down between Lolo and Buckhorse Bridge. FWP cautions that some of the power lines can be hard to see from far away. State wildlife officials also note that water will be carrying more debris in this aftermath of the storm, which can create dangerous hazards. Former President Donald Trump will soon make a campaign stop in Wyoming. Trump is scheduled to attend a fundraiser in Jackson Hole August 10th, his second visit to the Cowboy State in the last two years. The event is invite only and the exact venue will not be announced to the public. According to the invitation, entry to the fundraiser will cost $5,000 a person and photos with the former president will cost $35,000 per photo. U.S. Representative Harriet Hagan is also scheduled to appear. The Democratic National Convention has formalized its plan for voting on a new presidential nominee. It comes after a tumultuous week as President Biden announced Sunday he will not run for re-election, quickly endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris. MTN's Jonathan Amberian caught up with some of Montana's Democratic delegates as they look back on the week and forward to the future. The job of delegate to a political party's national convention doesn't always come with a lot of attention, but that changed for Montana's Democratic delegates when President Joe Biden announced he was ending his campaign for re-election. You know, people are very interested in, it's a unique situation. I did not sign up to be a part of a historic convention, but here we are. Shaney Henry and James Revis were among about 25 pledged delegates selected at the Montana Democratic Party's convention in Haver last month. They were all initially committed to Biden, the winner of Montana's primary. But that changed once Biden dropped out of the presidential race, endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris to take over the nomination. So now we are free as individual delegates to endorse who we choose. The state party says the DNC outlined rules and policies for delegates on Wednesday. Since then, several Montana delegates have announced they're signing on to support Harris, including Revis and Henry. I am grateful for to President Biden and for his service. And um, his decision to step down was a personal one for him. Uh, at the same time, I am very excited about the energy that Vice President Kamala Harris has injected into the party. I can feel the enthusiasm. While the nomination will be officially decided in a virtual roll call as early as next week, delegates will still be heading to Chicago later next month for the full work of the convention. I think the energy will be tremendous. Um, you know, I, I know that I am honored and excited to be a delegate and see the process. I've never been there in person before. One prominent Montana Democrat, Senator John Tester, hasn't announced support for Harris or anyone else for that matter as presidential nominee. When Biden dropped out, Tester said he favored an open nomination process to determine the party's new nominee. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News.